recording now. Okay, I okay, so for those who might feel bored during this workshop because you already learned the things before, you can go to the repo and there's this uh challenges folder. Then there's this one challenge that you can try. I paste in Discord. You can try uh some a confession to make is I haven't written the exploit yet, so I hope I just hope it is exploitable. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> Fingers crossed. I Hold think up. you're all, I think you're good enough to exploit it. Because at least I tried and you can get a leak from anywhere you want. So it's good enough. Then we got quite a lot of primitives to do right, uh relative right and stuff like that. So I hope that you all can Find an exploit for it, then we can use it for our CTS. Oh wait, if I put this here, then we cannot use it for our. Ah, uh, okay, never mind. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah wait, big can idea. Yeah, okay, I think it's too late. <laughs> it's too late. No, never mind. Never mind. We just. Never mind. We can make some more other challenges. Never mind. The challenge should be hard enough that. Uh. Okay, we'll figure it out later. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, then uh, let uh, David start. Yeah, I just start now. Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, so uh, this workshop, we are going to talk about return-oriented programming. Uh. So uh, yeah, this ROP, return-oriented programming. So uh, first we understand what uh, return does in a typical uh, like it in assembly la. so uh, then we can use the knowledge that we have for returns in assembly to uh, exploit programs uh, to, uh, mainly C programs so for a typical C program the ending of a function uh, ends with pop rbt and return and uh, the stack looks something like this la. so we have uh, the scope of the function uh, it starts with the uh, return address, and then uh, a stack frame pointer. Uh, this, uh, you can read about it, uh, what this does, but uh, it's just a thing that is needed for the program execution. And uh, yeah, it's stored here. Uh, and then after that, we have the local variables. So uh, when we hit pop RBP, right? Uh, so this red arrow is the stack pointer. It points to the head of the stack. And the blue one is the instruction pointer. So when we hit pop RBP, it pops this stack frame pointer and stores it into the register RBT. And then uh, when we go to the return instruction, what it does is it takes this return address and pops it into the instruction pointer. So uh, if it's something like this, uh, so if we have a, uh, an actual value there, uh, what it does is it will, uh, make the instruction pointer point to that address. So it becomes something like this, okay? And uh, so we can now look at a buffer overflow attack bar. So it's quite like uh, the, an entry level thing that everyone learns when they start do polling. Uh, so we have a very vulnerable function here as uh, it uses gets and it doesn't check for input length and it stores it inside an array. So, uh, what we can do is, uh, again, the stack looks like this. We have the array here and then stack frame pointer and then the return address. So uh, what we can do is we can input uh, more than uh, 40 bytes here. So uh, it would be something like this. Uh, we input more than 40 bytes, we overwrite the stack frame pointer, and then we can put uh, any address we want here, any value we want here in the return address. And uh, this will make the, when this pull me returns, it will jump to the address specified by us. So this is uh, an, a very, uh, an overview of a buffer overflow attack. Huh? So the question is, uh, can we do more than just control one jump? Can we do something up there? Because a buffer overflow, we jump to this address that we specify and it's done. So yeah, that, that's why we have return oriented programming, which is uh, we control, we, we put more things after the first return address and we can control our program execution flow. 
So uh, a simple run through is like this. If we put like two more addresses uh, after the first one, what, what it does is the first one, it, as we expect, uh, it will return and jump to this function. Okay, it will pop this into the instruction pointer. And so you see the blue arrow, it jumps to this fun first function. And when the first function, it fin uh, finish, uh, oh, okay, uh, disclaimer, uh, 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 this, um, like this stack, uh, it's when there are no other like local variables and stuff like that. Uh, hey, wait, no, okay, no, 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 no. Uh, sorry, I got confused, uh, nothing. Ignore what I just said. <laughs> so when the uh, when this return hits again, it will um, pop this into the instruction pointer, and we can jump to the second function. Yeah. Uh, so the second function will again execute and return, and then jump to the third function, and it goes on like that, lah. As long as we keep uh, controlling the addresses after after that, okay? So you can see how return-oriented programming can, can make us have control over the uh, program execution flow. Yes. So now we will uh, do the first challenge. So if you have cloned the uh, repo, you can navigate to exercise and the, the, the first exercise, uh, and then you can uh, do, do, do like a simple run through. Uh, you, you can try it first. Uh, I'm going to give you three minutes or so because yeah, it's just a buffer overflow. Uh. Yeah, maybe you can try and uh, we can have a demo with them. Yeah, Any uh, questions you can also ask now. I feel there's a program called Ball School, which I copied from someone other, uh, someone else's challenge. Like it gives an interactive view of the stack. You don't need to open in GDB or anything. You just run Bob School and you will see the stack contents and what happens when you write stuff into it. So um David, you want a demo or I I show the demo. Uh, you, you may open up Bob School. Yeah. Uh, hello, I have a question about the the about the ROP. Um, is it uh the number of function calls that you can chain together is limited by the size of the char buffer? Is that correct, or is there a way you can uh get unlimited chains of such function calls? Uh, the the so uh what you mean is can can you like build and like it. Uh, as long as you want, uh, so you need the scrub chain now. Uh, oh. The answer is the answer is uh no. Uh, the, no. The simple answer is yes because uh stack limit uh, that th there's a limit to how big your stack can grow. Uh. So yeah, you, you can't exceed the stack limit uh, That that's the first thing uh. The other thing is uh because uh here my my demo here. Uh, so here I'm using gets. There's also a thing called uh. Uh, F gets with yeah, which you can uh limit the input size. So uh, that's also another thing. Uh, so that's also a challenge. Uh, later on that we will see, and uh, it's also like some limitations to RP. So you have to uh, you you have to like make good uh, RP practices. When you see that uh, yeah, so you you can't just anyhow build your rock chain uh, sometimes you have to build it well uh, to fit inside the input limit okay uh, then i got another question uh, in this slide right you are overriding the 41st byte of the char array with an address that points inside the char array is it oh so uh here what i did was uh yeah the, the, um, the amount of a's here is actually 48 so uh, you see here the uh, the curly bracket here. Uh, it's actually uh, forty bytes here. So uh, because uh, this char char is one byte, right? So we have a uh, char array of length forty. That means forty bytes. Mm. So here I have forty a's, and then uh, 
we can have another stack frame pointer. So we uh, this is assuming that we are using 64 bits, uh, a 64 bit uh, executable. So here we have to override eight more bytes. Oh, okay, I see. Then the okay, uh, then for the next slide, right, where you chain three function calls. Yeah. Uh, the date beef points to inside the char array, is it? The date, oh, uh, this one is the, the three addresses here are already outside the uh, char array. So the char array, we have already filled it with A's. Oh, okay. I, I, yeah. Oh, okay, 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 thanks. I yeah, so it. we are overflowing it, the input. So normally, uh, we, we are just uh, like this, this code, the intended. Uh, usage is to fill the array, but we are filling beyond the array. Yeah, so everything up here is just uh, the things on the stack. La. So it's not actually the array. La. Okay, I, I, um, okay, yeah, I, I, thanks. Generally, I got some um, misunderstanding, but I understand already. So is it because uh, the way we see the stack here, the stack here, in this like the higher address is above, not below. Oh no, that, that wasn't a, the misunderstanding. I oh, thought okay. that you load the char array with um with references to functions that you want to execute. And then when you return, you override the return address into the char array and then you execute the char array. I thought that's what I was going on. Oh okay, okay. Yeah, but later we'll see more. Oh by the way, there's if you have an issue with installing. Are we running boss school? You can do add install lib and cursors five. That should work. Uh, let me put put the command here. Or oh, in the git pod, it's already installed, so should be fine. Oh, by the way, for those who are trying the other challenge, you can discuss in Discord if you want. If whoever is doing it. Uh, so I, I just I just demo with this one here. Yeah, yeah. Then we we'll, also have this. Here we also see the why why we need an extra eight bytes that that was mentioned just now. Oh, okay. So uh, then use G D M. We don't uh don't need G B because uh it will already have the. Show the stack. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, but this boss school is it's not actually the program, it's it's a fake program that are uh, you it's hard to say you run those. Oh it's not it's not the one here. Yeah, it's not, it's not. <laughs> run, then you it's, yeah, it's a I fake. It. Yeah. Oh what? Oh by the way, it can zoom in a bit or maximize quite small. Yeah, how, how do I how do I zoom? It's kind of is this big enough? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you want me to show? Because I got a native terminal, put it inside my terminal. Ah, okay, 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 then you can. Yeah, I'll show it. Here okay, are uh, one moment. Yeah, can you see my terminal? Yes, I can. Okay, so it, it looks like this. Hope you all can see something similar. Uh, let me start again. So didn't, I didn't include instructions on how to use it, but you just enter your characters and you'll see how it appears in the stack. And you, yeah, you can delete them. 
Then if you want to put special characters with text and coding, you just backslash x and for example for one gives you this or ff gives you this. Yeah, so so it's just like that. I think I should give credit to where I got this from. It's from uh my friend who wrote the challenge, this challenge for white text, SMU white text CTF. Yeah, so uh, should, you can try out uh, overflowing the buffer to override the return address here and get into the get it to call win. Then there you, you have successfully hacked it and get the flag. Uh, I think we, we give more time. Should we give more time? Uh, maybe uh uh two or three more minutes huh? okay we can play with this program i think you can just play around with the program with the input and you will see what or where the return address is and where you need to Overflow into. I think I can just do a short demo. If I spend like this on different characters. Wait, what happened? Oh, uh, run for too long. <laughs> okay, try again. I hope everyone can get this because it's quite important to have a sense of how the stack looks like before we proceed further. Otherwise, it's quite easy to get lost. Okay, let's say I submit this input. Then we will see that crash when the program counter is at Six four six is F. Okay, I think it timed out, but yeah, something like that. Yeah, anyone got the flag? Yeah, also uh one thing uh, uh when we when we do these kind of uh, overflow attacks, right? When we want to, uh, like, let's say, write the return address. So we want to write the, the, to the stack now. Oh, you got the flag, huh? Yeah. Nice, nice. Okay, this, just a bit of a cheat. We also have a source code, so maybe. You, eh? Oh, wait, I think I changed the flag in the binary. Yeah, so you, you cannot just look at the, the source code. Yes, uh, I don't want okay, if you can't see the chat, but yeah, I, I use this one for that one. But it's a very low point challenge anyway. Okay, I, I think we continue. Okay. Hope, hope everyone gets the feeling though. Because later we'll be doing more hardcore stuff. Not with this kind of, uh, this kind of helper stuff, you have to export the actual binary in the later challenges. But uh, here I just demo. Here I have to give in, uh, how many? I think 40. 40, yeah, 40, 40 A's. Then I need to give the address of V. 
in Little Endian. So very important. That's a very important thing. Little Endian, I start from the back. So 6-6, six, six. as you can see here, win is this one. 6-6, six, six, zero, 5 then 4-0, then you knock out. I need to zero out all the stuff. There we go. Let me see. Okay, we should successfully go into win and get our flag. Yeah. Uh, anyone has any more questions or needs more time? Or you want me to repeat? Uh, for this one, uh, if is there an ROP way for this? So oh, this one is we're just trying to give an intro to I guess this one is also written I uh, also rock because you have to return into yeah I, I think it's called red to win sometimes you just call it like that. Just return to the win function. So it, it is a rock, a very easy rock. Because you just you don't even need to get a rock change. But later we'll we'll take away these nice things one by one. Yeah, this one is just part one. We have we have six challenges in total. Get harder. Let's go. All right. Uh, I assume there's no more questions. Then maybe you continue. Okay. Okay. So uh. Yeah. Okay. So we. Continue after this. So, uh, yeah, as uh, Daniel said just now, uh, what if we don't have such a uh, good function here? Okay, then uh, we would, uh, for, for CTF challenges, right, we want to spawn a shell. So we need to call system uh, bin SH. So we know how to call system. Okay? We, we just overflow and then uh, we put the address of system. But how, what, what about the the arguments, we need to pass in the string slash bin slash sh. So where do, where do we put it? Uh, and the answer is uh, we need to put it inside a register. That's for, uh, actually uh, it's not for all programs. Uh, so you have like uh, mix, uh, it stores it inside the A registers. So like uh, A0 to uh, A7. And then you also have uh, ar different architectures. Lah. But uh, for here, uh, so for uh, normal, uh, uh, yeah, x86, 64 bit, uh, x two rows, we store it in uh, the, the first argument we store it in RDI. Lah. And then if we have subsequent ones, we store it in RSI, RDX, RCX, I, R9 in this order. And if there are more, we push them onto the stack. So uh, for system slash bin slash sh, we need to put that string inside RDI. Um, more specifically, uh, it's putting the address of that string. So uh, the pointer to that string. Uh. Now, so uh, this is why we need a thing called gadgets. Gadgets, basically, uh, it, it looks something, uh, it doesn't have to be E6, uh, it's just an example. Uh. Uh, Normally, a gadget is sub, uh, a few instructions that manipulate registers, and then it ends with a return. So you see pop RDI, it populates, uh, it pops the top of the stack and puts it into RDI. And uh, we have move, we have add, you can also have subtract, exchange, uh, anything that manipulates registers. Uh. And also, you see number six, uh, this jump is also considered as a gadget because uh, you can yeah, you can control the program flow also. So this is, yeah. So how a gadget helps us uh, solve the argument issue is like this. So let's say we have already uh, built our rock chain and uh, yeah, now we control the return address to the gadget. And if we also put the, uh, this one, it's a pointer. So it's an address, uh, address to the, where this string is stored at. So we put that here. So what happens is when we return, we go to the gadget and now we have the pop RDI, 
Now, this address of the string will be populated into RDI, as you can see here. And when we return, so let's say our system is at that EFA. So now we return, we would have successfully called system with the argument bin sh. So this is, uh, yeah, so to help us find gadgets, uh, this is a, a very basic example. Uh, we only use one gadget. Uh. So if you need more uh, complicated ga gadgets, you can use uh, gadget uh, tools like uh, RP++ or Rockford to help you find gadgets. Uh. So uh, now we'll move on to the second exercise and see, like, look at the use case of gadgets. So if you open up, second challenge. Yeah, you can see uh, the end goal is to uh, try to call win with uh, two arguments. And yeah, we need to control these two arguments to be cafe and uh, 1337. Yeah, so uh, maybe this one can give a bit more time. Uh, can give like, or uh, maybe I just demonstrate. Or do you guys want to try this? Give like. Yeah, uh, I think we demo getting, yeah, we demo this one this getting one. the gadgets, showing how okay. to find the gadgets. Yeah, so uh, how I find, I, I use, uh, RP plus plus uh. Yeah, so uh, I use RP plus plus uh. uh okay, but we cannot see. Uh, oh, we can see your terminal. Uh, cannot see my terminal. Uh. We just see your terminal, but nothing is happening. The terminal is showing. Exercise three. Uh, how about now? Still, still the same. What? It's like lagging. Zoom is lagging. Hmm. Wait, I share. Uh, nothing is. Uh, nothing is moving. Yeah, I see. I missed. We share. Oh, by the way, we have given a export template. XPL.py. So you just. Kind of just fill in the blanks in there if you don't really have much idea what to do. So one minute check. Uh I I I share I share. No, Zoom is lagging. I click the share button, it's not sharing. Okay. Can you see it now? Yeah. Do you see my terminal? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh okay. so uh I'm using wait oops. Okay. Okay, so I'm using RP plus plus la. So uh how you use it? is uh, you specify the file and then the, uh, the I actually never use proper uh, so I, I can't uh, compare uh, but uh, RP++ has been, has been holding up quite well for me. Uh, so we dash F to specify the binary and then use dash R to specify the maximum length of the gadget. So we put five uh, just to demonstrate. And then no, nothing yeah. is showing. Wait, what? You, you can't see me typing the thing Start, yeah, start again. Oh, no. Why, why is that, please? <laughs> yeah, you can see my CPU usage, like, like, 94-95%. I don't know why, like, why is Zoom eating up my resources that much? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I think I think you share. I think I use Zoom. <laughs> My fan also just shouts non-stop. But okay. If it shouts, it's okay. But if if nothing works, then that's bad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah then I'll, I'll take over. Okay, can you see? I have three panes here. Oh, I still cannot see anything. Oh, ah, cannot see yeah. I think I think I still see the I still see David's screen. Oh, yeah. yeah, because I I click stop sharing, it's now not responding. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Why? Maybe, uh? maybe Daniel can force stop the. Oh, stop. Oh, yeah, yeah. When you click share, I think. Oh, because you're hosting. Let me try again. Yeah. Okay, yeah, can see okay, okay, yeah, yeah, I stop now. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I can't really so here's the challenge. Here's the template, exploit template. So, first, you want to set the contents of these two arguments such that it matches these two. So, just now you mentioned that we want the first argument is place into RDI. And the second argument we didn't mention, but in x uh, in x eighty six sixty four bit it's in first argument is in RDI, then second is in RSI. So we need to fill in RDI with this and RSI with this. So we need gadgets to help us do that. So I'm you I, I normally use Ropper. I just open the file with proper and I normally don't remember what options to use, so I just grab and it works up. So here is one of the gadgets. Pop RDI red as we see just now. Then similarly I'll look for grab RSI. Then here we find another one that pops RSI pop. Yeah, it, which are exactly what I had here. So just put in. Okay, then here there's something extra, there's a pop R15. Then you might be thinking, or maybe not, but we might ask what happens to R15 here. But since we don't really care about what R15 holds, we just care about RDI and RSI. We don't really need to worry so much about what goes into R15. We can just give it some random value to fill in the space so that when we call this, when we return into this gadget, we will call pop RSI. So we put some value into RSI. So we do pop R15 and we just give it some random value. And then we return into our next uh, rope gadget. Okay, so let me, I think you all can follow along. You all just fill in all the addresses. So to get the address of win, uh, there's this command object dump that we can use or we can use nm so for example nm this and we get all the addresses and we grab for win and here we have address of win yeah these are the three things that we need so can you all figure out what to do for the rock chain or we get someone to share your idea. What should we do first in our payload? Wait, sorry, what's the NM command? Uh? Uh, NM is to get addresses and of each symbol in the binary. So like we name all the symbols. You just get their addresses. Oh yeah, but I didn't mention, I didn't explain very detailed. But so so with this we get the address of the win function. Oh in other in other way I can do this. I open the GDB. Then I check so win it indeed starts at this address.
because we eventually want to return to win, right? That's what we did earlier in the first challenge. So in this case, it's like, okay, okay. yeah, it's like just go and find the, where's the function at? Uh? But NM is just like yeah. a, it just finds all the function names and returns yeah. all the address of the function. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, so anyone wants to give it this a try? What do we do first? Uh, how many A's should we put? Uh, the buffer is 32, right? So maybe 32 plus uh, 8, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Brandon a bit close, but remember just now there was 40 also in the first challenge because there's the... There's the... Uh, okay, I'll, I'll do a demo. Yeah, but just now we saw there's the stored EVP RBP pointer. So we need to account for that. Yeah, uh, let me let me do a short demo to show show it. Uh, uh this is not efficient, but we got twenty, uh, forty. No, uh. Yeah, I hear. Yeah. Uh, okay, I think you all know the idea. I will continue. I think I break at the wrong place. I got 32 here. Okay, I'll try again. I try again. Why? Uh? Why does it not stop? Okay. Wait, you, the, the, the one is the win function, right? My bad. Uh, yeah, yeah. This one. Then, here. Then, Page 32 is, and you see here it is in fact into RSP. You see, uh, I go up a bit more, I go up by 40. So here are our A's, and then there's okay, uh, a bit weird, uh, but there, there's something before the return. Return address. Okay, wait, I think I might not have. I can create a 32 bit, a 32 byte string. Then I, I just inspect the stack like this minus. Yeah, I see you got minus 32, it doesn't start with A because there's that extra. Yeah, I see if I minus 40 only, I'll get it starting with the full string. So here we have this. Then here we have this. We have our something, I think stored. Okay, it doesn't look like a stored RBP, but this one is the return address. Because it's libc start main. Okay, uh, we don't, we skip these details for now. We just continue. So okay. here. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, the, on top of that one, is it the return value? Like the, this one? Yeah. Actually it's not. I, it should be, the stored RPP. But I think it's because it, it's main, so it's something else. It points to this global destructors. I think it's it's what it is like this for main. But oh. It, oh, okay, okay. So it's so for other it's, functions. Uh, is... Yeah, normally mm -hmm. for other functions it will be the stored RBP pointer. Uh the RBP pointer you they'll store it into here. We'll look, we'll see more of that later. But normally we just ignore it as well. Then this one is the return address. Because how uh how how it works in Linux is libc start main will call the main function. So it will return back to libc start main. So this one is expected. This one is the return address. Like we like what we saw just now also. Okay, let's continue. Here so here we say 40. Then what do we want to do first? Now, now that we have 40 in front, we want to start building our blockchain. So what do we do first? Either pop RDI or RSI. Yeah. Actually, we need to set up the string first, right? Which string? The the 
the X zero X cafe and the zero X one three three seven. Yeah, but uh, does it come first or does it come after the gadget? Oh, uh, it comes after I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we can do this. Uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, explain didn't explain this, but P sixty four. What it does is it converts this into a little ambient string, so it fits into the buffer. Because uh, if you just give the number, this is a string, right, and you expect a string, so we have to convert our numbers, our integers into a little ambient string. But generally, we once we are used to it, we just remember to yeah to wrap all our addresses in P sixty four. 64 bit. Okay, okay, let's move on. What's next? We already set RDI. Then now we're going to set yeah, uh, RSI. So we use the R15. And here we give it the wait. Oh, oh wait. Uh this one is wrong. Huh? This one should be cafe because it's the first argument. First argument is RDI. And yeah, second argument is M P seven. Then we don't forget that we have a pop RDI as well. We don't care so much about it, so I just give it zero. Okay, then, then finally, what do we do? Where's the final place we should return to? Yeah, we give it win. Okay, so now let me run this exploit. Oh, uh, I don't have Python 3. Uh, okay. So let me show how I normally do my workflow. This is I open the file in GDB. I attach to the PID here two seven five six. Then now it's waiting for my input because it's paused. I gave a pause command. Uh, I I call the pause function at the start. So now I just break at the return address. I just do that. Disassemble main. I break at the return address. Uh, before return. Break before return is called. And then I just continue. Then I'm ready to send the input from my export script. So now we are in red. So let me show the export script we have here. First, we have our rock chain. We go into prop RDI red. So I SI single step in GDB. We have prop RDI. Then uh, prop RDI is done. So we have cafe into RDI already. So we are halfway there. Now, then now prop RSI. 1337 is inside also. Then prop RDI. 15, just give it a zero. Uh, don't, don't really care that much about what it holds. Okay, then now return and return into win. So here you can see how we managed to call this gadget, this gadget, and finally go into win. And since we have the conditions satisfied as earlier, and expect it to give a shell. Wait, what happened? Oh wait, the shell is over here. Uh it's over here in my export script. Yeah, I've got shell. So this is the most kind of most basic thing to learn next for Rob, which is to use gadgets to set registers uh, register values. Does anyone have any questions? Or wants me to repeat? Because after this we'll we'll be doing a lot more stuff. So, Let's get the 
basic strip. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. So this is um, so in C when we call a program, uh, the, the all of, it gets all of the arguments from registers. Is it? Yeah, yeah. That's how. Maybe not not just okay in C because it compiles directly to machine instructions directly into assembly. Then yeah, it will call from. Uh, for 64 bit, you will call from the, you will take arguments from the registers. But to be more specific, it is, uh, let me copy paste this. I wrote somewhere. To okay. be more specific, is this, this set of registers. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Then if you have more than six arguments, then it will put into the stack. Oh, okay, okay, I see. So that's, uh, oh, okay. That's what's yeah. happening under the hood. La. Yep, yep. Okay, okay, thanks. A bit of bonus for 32 bit, they put everything onto the stack. So we don't really need to do hop RDI if we are doing 32 bit. But nowadays, there's not much 32 bit uh, computers anymore. I might be wrong. I think so. Then if it's the 32 bit one, where do you know, uh, how do you know where to put the arguments inside the stack? Since if it's registers, it's always getting from the same place. Oh, uh, for 32 bit, it's also at the same place. It is at the top of the stack. Oh, okay, okay. So it's even easier. You don't need to do this. You just put it right there on the stack and, and it's done. And you don't even need gadgets. Yeah. Uh, okay, thanks. So in this case, the gadgets are retrieved from libc, is it? We haven't touched libc yet. Because here, we are taking from the binary itself. Oh, okay. Uh, or maybe you want to show? Because I saw your Gidra open. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, here I show you. That's not how I, how I got it was. I ran Ropper with the binary. So with the binary, there's no libc involved as of now. Oh, gosh, don't, don't spoil it. We have this later. <laughs> spoiler, spoiler. But yes, yes. Okay, so yeah, this is from the binary. Uh, uh, let David continue. Oh, okay. there's no problem. Hopefully Zoom, the, yeah. Hopefully Zoom treats me well. Yeah. So uh, I'll just uh, import the... It's not slow today. Normally it's faster. Download more RAM. <laughs> Download more RAM. <laughs> I need more CPU power. Yeah, so uh, when I first started with uh, learning ROP, la, I've seen it somewhere. La. So, some people say when you have a very big binary, you have random bytes, it's very easy to have uh, a, a set of instructions ready for you. So yeah, that that that's the uh, yeah that's for gadgets uh, Yeah, so you see there are a lot of these pops, reds everywhere. Yeah, it's a pop. Wait, pop on the piece on this phone. Yeah, but but it's uh, very easy to find. Uh, it's a uh, set of random bytes can usually give you guys so you see the lot of pops but we will get into this later on yeah but uh yeah the, uh, those tools uh will help you scan through the binary uh, instead of just scrolling through and then looking at assembly yourself uh, are there any registers that you must avoid touching when we are doing rope 
uh, I think no uh, la, in general. Yeah, generally, no, uh, uh, depends on the function you're calling. Just things like, uh, I guess there are more sensitive ones, like the stack pointer itself, but you will need some special gadget to do that in the first place. But generally, as long as the function doesn't mind, then never mind. And normally, normally it doesn't matter. Oh, okay, okay. But let's say if your fun if the function expects some value at some uh, argument, then you must of course satisfy it. So for example, one one example that oh can always give problems is exact ve. Uh, well, the function signature is it takes the what's the function signature? Let me, let me check. What is the fun? Oh yeah, task name, name, and environment. Are this zoom right. oh, correct. Yeah, it uh, takes in these three things, and if your V or ends environment pointer, it points to some valid address, uh, unreadable address, then it will give you a sec fault. So these are some things to watch out for. So generally for this kind, the we make it point to something that we can control, is it? Either that or point to zero. Okay. Yeah, it's fine if it's zero. They are happy. Uh, I, got, I got another question. Uh, if you want to override the return address and call uh, and make a system call, the address of system, is it fixed or is it um, depend on the, the runtime environment? That's our very, that's very our, good question. That's our next challenge. Uh, yeah, yeah. Then I, I guess we can move on to the next one now. Since yeah, yeah just yeah, nice. Since that question, yeah, very nice. Yeah, so uh, if you look at the third challenge, okay, same thing. Oh, I really like it, but so fast we can see stuff. You see the dragon. Can you see me uh importing the file? Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. 10 FPS. My potato yeah. laptop suffering. Uh, can you see the uh the binary being loaded? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, the question was, uh, is system always in the same place? Uh, it's actually, uh, I, I guess uh, software nowadays, uh, uh, our OS, uh, we have ASR enabled. Uh, so uh, it, uh, because system is in libc, right? It's a libc function. So uh, what ASR does is uh, it loads libc in a different address every time. So it randomizes the space. Yeah, so uh, that's why we have uh, dynamic bindings and stuff so that our program can find the actual address of system during runtime. Yeah, but uh, if, your, if, your, uh, if your executable is already using system when you, uh, when you compile your code and it uses system already, uh, it will have a place which uh, is always fixed. Uh, Fixed relative to the uh, to the uh, binary itself. Yeah, so so you can see this this address uh, will always be the same for system uh, But uh, this is not system itself. Like as in uh, the function body is not in here. But uh, th this address can be used uh, since it al also jumps to system in the C. Yeah, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, okay. Oh, so actually, uh, just to clarify, uh, you say uh, system is a libc function, but what is libc? Uh, libc is uh, the uh, 
C library. It's, it's a library. It's a library that stores all the uh, native functions of C. Oh. So like okay, print okay. F okay. puts and all those. Oh. Yeah, okay. Those are all in libc. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So you can see uh, puts also, uh, it also has the same, uh, I guess, uh, same structure la, because it's a libc function. Yeah, also print F and C. And so uh, if we look at the third challenge, okay. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just run now. Uh, those pointers. Can you see the git part? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, I'll just run the program now. Yeah, so uh, you can see it uh, prints out the time. And my favorite shell is this one. And then if I click something, uh, it exits. So uh, I'll just show the code. Uh, this was good here. So what it does is it uh, again gets, so this we know is vulnerable. Uh, and we can see it uses system. So this time we don't have a win function. So we need to call system with uh, bin sh ourselves. So uh, what we can do is uh, again, we overflow and then we get the address of system. So I already showed here right, just now. Yeah, we can. Uh, we don't know the actual address of system inside libc, but we can use this one. Yeah, so if we, if uh, you can try uh, try to fill in the template here. Yeah, where's system? Where's the shell? So for string, right? For string, you have multiple ways. If you are using Ghidra, you can use the. Uh, I usually use strings. And then here you can you can see the message and then the address. Yeah, so uh, I'll give maybe like uh five minutes so you can fill in this yourself. Guys, about the same as what we had just now, just different things that different function to call. Yeah, you are calling a different function, calling system this time. And another way to get address of system is you can use NM, like what I did just now. If you don't want to open up Ghidra or IDA. Do anyone want to return nothing, yeah, like the address? Oh, let me see. I run and see. What okay. mm -hmm. I have? Eh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, I guess not. I guess I guess I don't. Oh, I have another command. I use another command. Object down. I can share with you all in the chat. I normally don't remember. I I mean, I don't really remember how the arguments, but. Like this, or you can open up in GDB a print system. Yeah, so uh, I'll, I'll demonstrate that now. So, this big, 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 one more. so system uh, you can put system and then it will give you uh, but this one is in the C uh. uh you you need to print before running it. Oh print before running it. Yeah it's quite troublesome because it already resolved it. Eh? Oh yeah.
Does anyone uh, got the top shelf? But in this case, what, what does the return? The return? Oh, oh, this one. Uh, this one, uh, if, if somehow you think, uh, you, you can try, like, if you think your rock chain doesn't need uh, this amount of instructions, you can try. Like. But uh, if it fails, then you can uh, add a return, an extra return. It, it does nothing, uh, return. If you think about it, it seriously does nothing. Uh, but uh, re it's required mm -hmm. because the stack needs, needs to be aligned. So uh, I paste this article. Yeah. So for 64 bit, no, no for I, I think is it is it a C thing? I think it's a 64 bit thing. Uh, uh, so you need you need uh because yeah, you need four uh, for here. Yeah, but uh TLDR is if your if your call to system doesn't work, it, it somehow sex fault sex faults, then you just add a dumb dummy return. Uh, one that does nothing at the start of your rock chain or some anywhere in your rock chain just align is for alignment reasons it does nothing as in no op is it or yeah yeah it's like a no op because it's just red so does so the value doesn't matter you just need the correct number uh, uh number of gadgets yeah uh, number as in like the like the return the value it can be anything oh, the, just need the, like... the value for return uh. Yeah, it can be any value. I right? just said the number of characters must match, is it? Uh, this needs to be an address uh, to a return instruction. Oh, wait. So, wait, uh, oh, you just ignore yeah. it first. Then you, yeah, you can ignore it first. Then, then you okay. do what you think you should do first. Uh, this one shouldn't be here, I guess. I shouldn't have left it here. Yeah. So I just treat three just three. ignore it. Yeah, three is enough. Huh? Oh, also another way to find the address of this bin bin sh is can you strings? Let me find the command. Yeah. Okay. It, produce this tx. Oh, you got, you got it. Wow. Oh, nice lucky. Uh. You're lucky. Yeah. Uh, on your. Yeah, hey, uh. hey, but we are using this. Oh. I was testing it on Ubuntu 18. Then yours, if you're using my 20. <laughs> okay, just lucky, I guess. That's good. I use my old one. My old one is Ubuntu 18. Then it gave me problems. Oh, I actually never never had problems. Uh. Never? Oh, you're lucky. Eh. I, I only heard about the return, like oh. uh, filling it with a dummy return uh, after like this. Preparing for learn to learn with you. Uh. I when when I did it myself, I never had this problem. In the past, when I do, I also don't have this problem. I don't know why suddenly they like always. I have not done for so long that I don't remember. But so, uh, sorry. Uh, in this case, wait, if the shell is not stable, it's okay, right? Like it, it just it shows the shell. Then when I type something, it just sex after that. Sex for uh. Yeah. After after the shell appear. Do you get any output? Uh, no output. Oh, then, then I think oh. it's Yeah, then, then you need the dummy yeah. one. Oh, yeah. shit, okay. Yeah, then I think now you kind of, uh, you can see it does, it does nothing, uh, just to make it alive properly. I guess I'll fill in this one. So uh, I guess uh, if you are trying it, uh, you should have these filled in. Right?
And should have this filled up now. Uh, uh, it still crashes if after I put the return though. <laughs> It's broken pipe, though. It's oh, the EOF. Oh. Uh, what, what, what did you put as uh, return? Uh, I, put, I put uh, 4, 446, which is just a return value on the ROPPER. Oh, so, oh, okay, okay, okay. So, so it's just this red line. This should be okay. You put it uh, before or after? I put it, uh, uh, I put it before, like the first one. So we just return oh. it, we'll go to the next one, right? Yeah. It should work. Yeah. Should work on. Rip. Uh, hope it's not issue with different versions. But <laughs> there's no not feel why it hasn't worked. Oh, I think you can share your your whole exploit. If you I think I can just share in Zoom chat or Discord. No, in chat. I, I think everyone should try it. Oh, I sent it on Discord. Oh, I sent it on Zoom. Okay. Oh, I think the shell might be. Eh? Uh, wait, uh. shell is different, but let me check what was our value. Because there are, for, for strings, they are normally seen in two places. One holds the address of the string, and one holds the actual contents of the string. Oh, so you Wait, might why, why, Sorry, why, why, why is your pop? It, the pop RDI return of the address, uh, why is it 681? 681 is. Okay. Oh, yeah, oh. There, I know. Where you oh, are. yeah, you got the wrong one. Yeah, the wrong address for that gadget. But I think, yeah, I think the shell address is correct. At six, it starts with six. Maybe the start at six is not correct. Let me check in the middle. But what about the challenge? <laughs> yeah, I, I think you can get Gypsy Leak. Cannot. Uh, no. <laughs> Oops. Oh, why not? Are we discussing this part? Oh. Okay, cannot get from. Okay, I think this part at least I discussed with you in Discord so we don't yeah. pollute the stuff here. Yeah, I think we can move on now. Yeah, so uh, I'll move on. Uh, okay, uh, so wait, there's wait. also. Yes, does everyone, can everyone get it? Oh, is everyone done? Or do you have more questions? Or stuck? Or stuck? No, I, assume, I assume no questions. 
Come on. Hmm? Yeah, okay. Then uh, I think I can move on. Okay. So uh, there's, there's another thing, it's uh, red to CSU. So if you look at uh, just now, I, I scrolled through it just now. Yeah, this one. Uh, it's called uh, libc CSU init. You can see a big uh, pop chain and a uh, red. So this one is also a gadget. Uh. And uh, yeah, it's quite useful uh, when, you, when, when you can't find any uh, gadgets, you can always go to uh, CSU. So we call it red to CSU. And yeah, uh, these two uh, like blocks of instructions are, are in libc CSU init. And you can use them together to uh, populate. So you see here, you have RSI and then EDI. EDI is uh, just RDI, but uh, so the difference between RDI and EDI is just the uh, length. So EDI is the lower, two, uh, lower how many bytes are? Huh? Uh, lower two bytes. Wait, no. Yeah, lower two bytes. Four bytes huh? And lower four bytes, sorry. Oh, this is eight bytes. Yeah, so RDI, RDI is the full uh, eight bytes. Uh, EDI is the lower four bytes. But uh, it, yeah, you, it's still the same register, uh, just different length. So you can, yeah. And then uh, this one ends with a call instead of a red. So you need to control R12 and RDX, which is the second part. Uh. So these two can be used together, but uh, there's also a problem, uh, since this is so powerful, why don't we just use this every time instead of finding gadgets? So you can, uh, does anyone want to try to answer why we don't want to use this every time? Is it not all libc has the CSU in it? Uh, it, it this one I'm not sure, actually, uh, I don't know what CSU in it does now, but uh, I think it comes with every C program. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not inside libc yet. It's it's in your binary itself. Yeah, it, oh, yeah. It. it's in your binary. So you see, this this is still in our binary. Then, like the name suggests, I still initialize stuff. Initial. Oh, okay. don't go more. In, I guess we won't go go more into this. But there's an init array, as you see there. Init array is is there's this thing called constructors for each program there are constructors and destructors like OOP stuff but each binary also has you can define constructors and destructors stuff that are executed at the start of the program before main and destructors are after main so this uh, does something related to that yeah it does stuff Uh, sometimes your overflow not so long. Uh. Yeah, you can see here a lot of pops. Uh. So sometimes you only need uh, EDI, uh, uh, RDI, or even uh, RDI and ISI only, but you, you still need to uh, pop. You see here, pop six times, and then some more you need to call this. Yeah, so if, uh, if I limit your input size, then cannot. Uh. You cannot use this one now, or you cannot use it uh, anyhow you want. So uh, that, that, that's back to uh, what I said earlier, you need to find gadgets and construct your rock chain wisely. Yeah, so, uh, okay, so just now uh, we have system, we have system inside the, uh, inside our binary uh, because we use system. Uh. So if you look at the source code, we call it system. Okay, not this one, sorry, wrong one, this one. All right, you see here, we use system. So that's why it is included in our binary. But uh, what if this time, uh, what, what, what if I never use system? What happens? So uh, this is a C, C thing. Uh, so to reduce the binary size, if we don't use a function, it will not be included. So, then uh then we can't just take 
the address from here because this wouldn't be here in the first place. So we need to find system inside libc right now. So uh, this is uh, read to libc. La. Yeah, so uh, I need to introduce two concepts. Uh, you can, uh, I'm going to go through it very, uh, at a very high level. La. So we have a thing called PLT, which is Procedure Linkage Table, and GOT, which is Global Offset Table. So uh, these are just two tables. One holds instructions and uh, the other one holds addresses. So you might ask, uh, if I just need the address of a function inside libc, why don't I just pop, uh, why don't I just have one table to store the address? Why do I need another PLT? But uh, if you think about it, every time you run a binary, uh, because of ASLR, libc will be in a different location every time. So every time you start your binary, uh, it needs to run through all the existing uh, C functions and then populate the actual address of it, which is uh, very inefficient uh, as you can probably imagine uh, because there are a lot of functions and you don't need all the functions. So why waste time populating the address for functions that you will never use anyways? So that's why we have PLT. So PLT uh, looks like this. Uh, this is one PLT entry. Uh, so this is for get. And you might recognize this jump push jump pattern uh, because uh, it is yeah, jump push jump. Yeah. So uh, this is the PLT entry, and then this is the GOT entry. Uh, let's say for gets. Uh, okay. uh, so uh, what this does is uh, these two can perform a thing called dynamic binding, which is when uh, which is resolving the address of the function when you call it, when you actually need it. So uh, when we call get, we will uh, actually go to this address, this uh, entry in the PLT. And you can see here, it jumps to the address specified by uh, this location. So it's there stopped here. Lah. So uh, this is the GOT entry. So you see here, but uh, oddly enough, this address actually points back to the PLT. Uh, this is a default. La. So before we call the function, so when we first start the binary and before we call that specific function, uh, it, it will always be like this. It will always point back to the instruction after that jump. So this jump will uh, jump to the next instruction, la, which is push up. And uh, this one, what, uh, what, what's the uh, following jump? This address is actually the start of the PLT. So the head of the PLT. Uh. So uh, at the very start of the PLT, we have some things, and then we have entries, which look like this. So why do we jump to the head of the PLT? There's uh, one thing called uh, DL resolve. It, uh, it's a function uh, that helps uh, resolve uh, the address of uh, functions, C functions. So uh, I won't get into detail. You can read about it if you're curious. Uh, there's also a, an attack based on that resolve. Uh, but here we are just concerned about uh, GOT and PLT uh, uh, at a very high level view. Yeah. So uh, after, after jumping to the PLT head, the address will be resolved and here GOT will be uh, updated with the actual address of that function. Yeah, so this is dynamic binding. Uh. So uh, return to libc, what, what it does is we want to find all the, we want to have access to all the C functions uh, that might not be used in our binary. So in this case, we want system, right? So we, if we want system, we need to find the address of it. But how, how do we find the address of system? We, we don't have the, that PLT entry. I mean, uh, sorry, uh, we don't have that um, like binary here. Like, it's not included in our binary. Like. So what we can do is we can leak other functions. So let's say we leak uh, printf. We leak the address and uh, We've, we know the offset of it. So we need the actual address of it here, right side here. And then we have the left side, which uh, maybe it is used in our program. It is used in our binary. So we can find the 
uh, yeah, wait, no, sorry. Uh, we know the offset of it in libc. We have access to libc. So we know the offset, we know the exact address. Now we can uh, calculate the base of the libc. And if we want to uh, call system this time, uh, we can just take the offset of system in libc and add it to the base. Yeah, then, then we can call it the uh, system lab. Yeah. So, okay. So I guess we can move, move on to the fourth challenge. Yeah, so if you look at the source here, we have, uh, we, we, we never called system anywhere. So I, I can show you, I can show you here. If we disassemble it, now we will see that uh, if we can find, uh, yeah, there's no system here. There's only gets and puts because we, we only use these two. So here's the PLT entry for this one and the PLT for this one. Yeah, so uh, how, how can we export this? How do we uh, leak the address? Anyone has any ideas? How do we leak the, uh, as, I, as I said here, right? We want to find, uh, so in this case, it's not printf, it's puts. Uh, so if we have, how, how can we leak the address of puts? I'll do some demo to show what exactly we are looking for. Okay, so what we are looking for? Go here. Okay. So um, yeah, we are. Uh, so if you look at the template here, right? We have two chains. So. The first one, it says uh, leak puts entry in the GOT. So uh, as I said earlier, right, uh, there's, there's this GOT, it stores addresses. So if we can print out what is stored inside here, inside the GOT, then we can get the address, right? So uh, what we need here, I, I think I can, I can just show this one. And then uh, maybe you can get the shell yourself. Uh. So here again, uh, how much? Uh, yeah, forty. Yeah. So uh, here, what I need is I uh I need puts, right? I need to call puts, but uh, I need to call puts with some argument. So what would that be? That will be the uh GOT of puts because I want to look at the address. I want to look at the content stored inside. Okay, so I, I need to do the pop and then here I put the GOT entry. Yeah, so uh, this will be the address of that uh, GOT entry, uh, which is the address of, uh, let, uh, just assume that this is puts up. Uh, yeah, so it will be the address here. And then if we do puts, uh, if we put and then we pass in this address, it will print the content, which will be the address of puts. Uh, a, lot, a lot of addresses uh, might be confusing. Yeah, but uh, yeah, here we can just do puts like that. So what this does is it, it, it calls something like this. Uh, Yeah, something like this uh. Yeah, effectively these three are doing this. And then uh this uh will give us the address of puts in uh during that runtime. Uh. And after getting that, we need to use that information to calculate the base of the C. So you can see here, 
uh, we receive a line and this line will be given by our pulsar. And we can uh, calculate that. So we have the address and then we have the offset of it inside libc. As just now I said, yeah, then we will get the base. Now, so uh, after getting the base, we need to call system. So we need to send a second rock chain. So how do we how do we call the how do we call vol second the second time? How do we call this one? How, how, how do we get to uh, have another input? Because here we sent it once, we need to send in our rock chain a second time. What should we do here? So rock chain is the leaking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we need to jump to the bottom again. Yeah, so, so here we need to jump to bottom. Yeah, after jumping back to bottom, we get to input the second time. Yeah, so this will be uh, the lead. Uh, and yeah, how, how do we find the offset? This we need to have the, we, have, we need to have access to libc. Uh, uh, I can do a crappy demo. It might not be the most efficient way to do it. Or yeah, I can, I can do a demo for one more. Uh, Daniel, what? How how do you usually find offsets? Ah, uh? I use GDP. Uh. Yeah, I was I also always use GDP. Okay, I guess, I guess it's the correct way. Yeah. So uh, uh to demonstrate uh just now uh why why what I said uh we have ASLR right so the address will always be different every time I I guess I can show it now uh. so if I do. Okay, so I, I can print system. Yeah, so this is the first time now. I'm going to put it here. Now. Oh, no. Okay. okay. Yeah, so uh, if I kill it and I run it again, Uh, and uh, the system again. You can see it's a different address now. Well, I guess I should also, I should also show the memory map. Your pace is different, but Your, you didn't paste the new value. Wait, oh, I didn't, oh. Yeah, so uh, here the libc is in this, the, the uh, start is here. We are not libc, then you will figure out. Oh, it, it oh wow, cool. I didn't know this. Yeah, okay. yeah, good to know. Yeah, so you can see the offset is here. Hey, I mean, not the offset, the start of the libc is here. Yeah, so. Uh, if I put the offset, so, so I can calculate the offset now. We can, or we can type in G, G, B, uh, GF X info system. What? Yeah. <laughs> so many new things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but uh, just to illustrate my point, uh, so you can, you can see this is the offset of system inside the PCL. And uh, if you if you run the uh, if you run something, yeah, X info. Uh. Yeah. X info system. Yeah, then there's an offset. Why why is it a different offset? Huh. Oh wait, I, I I think I got the wrong base. I think I got the wrong base. I know that or yeah, I got the wrong base. Because just now, 
Yeah, just now I, I, I said the, the base is yeah. this one, it should, it should be the second one. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so uh, this time you see uh, the start is this, this is the base. And if we do P system, that's yeah, this one. And we can calculate the offset here. Oh, over to copy. And then I do this. Yeah, you can see this is the offset. Uh. Yeah, so maybe I put it here. And uh, it, it, if we run it the second time, you can see that the offset will be the same uh, because Lipc doesn't change. Uh. It's just that that the address of it is different now. I'm going to take this. And then I hit the base. Yeah, it's still the same thing now. So you can see here. So we can, we, we can put this inside the system offset. Yeah, and you can uh, try to fill in puts yourself. Yeah, yeah, I can try to find it. Yeah. And uh, this bin sh, uh, you can see uh, we don't have the string bin sh inside our program. So if you search for strings inside the program, you won't find it. Uh, but uh, there's a very interesting fact that uh, bin sh, the, the string bin sh lives inside libc. Yeah, so you can also find that now. I think I can, I can demonstrate the string part. But uh, I, I give some time for you to find puts for some. Maybe uh, one minute or two. It should be, should be quick. Uh, it's the same procedure. You use X and O. Uh, is the offset different for different binaries? Uh, for different libc versions. If you use the same libc for uh, different binaries, the offset will still be the same. Uh, so uh, if if you don't have, uh, let's say the the challenge la, let's say you're doing a CTF challenge, but they don't give you libc la, then you need to uh, leak the version of libc yourself. There's also a database search where you can uh, have like two address uh, of two different C functions. You input it, it will give you the uh, the version of the libc. Yeah, we can show that later. Yeah. Find that. Also, there might be the case that um, the binary that they give to us has a different libc version with the server. Yeah, the libc uh, version, uh, okay. the libc version yeah, depends yeah. on your own system. Yeah. So if you are using Ubuntu, 20, Ubuntu 18, then it will be different from Ubuntu 20. For example, so it all depends on what so what what version the what OS the, the server is using. Yeah, so if the server uses a different libc, usually uh, usually they either want you to leak the uh version of libc yourself, or they will provide you with the libc. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, libc database search. Yeah, you can give it. Uh, you can give more uh, if uh, because in some cases I think uh multiple versions will share the same like same offsets, so you can input more information to find the exact version you want. And so that's that uh, these two. Yeah, it will give me the two libc versions. Uh. Yeah, so uh, I think I'll, I'll move on now uh, to find to find the string. Uh, so uh, for this one, we can uh, use GDB. Uh, and uh, if we look at the VM map, yeah, we can see uh, libc is, it, it starts from here and then ends uh, here. Uh, 
So we can actually search using the find function. Uh, you, you need to pass it three arguments. Uh, so the first one is the start address and then the end address. So I, I, I think we don't have to search for the whole thing now. We can just hear it like that. Uh, here. Yeah, and then uh, what we want is we want the message. Yeah, so if we type this, you can see one pattern found and it is stored here. And we can verify this ourselves. So if we examine the string stored there, yeah, you can see. So we can uh, again use this one, but uh, not the literal, like not the uh, actual address. Uh, we can use the offset because again, uh, this is inside libc and libc has a different uh, base every time. And so we can calculate this offset also. Yeah, and this will be the offset of that string. All right, uh, cheat, not so much, yeah, faster way, uh, shorter way, you can type grab b message in the GF. What? Yeah. Don't even need the quotes, but yeah. Then oh, okay. You X info that address. Wow. <laughs> so it's like making your life easier. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's why hey, wow. so no new instead of using plain GDP. Okay, okay. But the offset, is, but offset might be a bit off because it's from a different page. Hmm. Yeah, but this prep is very nice now. No more typing ugly, uh, fine. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> too long. Yeah, also need to use VM map and these things. Also, it's different yeah. in the offset. Let me check what's the yeah. offset that works. Oh, uh, I think you didn't show the got GOT just now. I thought you were going to show it. Uh, how should I show it? Okay. Can I start GOT? What? Uh yeah, GOT. Just so GF or what? Uh, oh, not, just oh, just GOT. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, so this is the address of the GOT, uh, and this is the content that is storing. Yeah, so at so the moment, it's not. It's not resolved. Yeah, it's not resolved. So uh, currently, currently we are uh at the start of. Main, uh, yeah, uh, so you can see uh, if I if I break after the puts, now if I break here, if I continue, now we are after puts. So if I do joke here again, you can see puts has been has already been resolved. So this will be the address of the up. Yeah, so uh, one tip lah, because personally I've uh, I've had this problem a lot of times now. So before before you need the address, make sure that the GOT entry has already been updated. Uh, if not, you you will sit there for hours thinking why your export doesn't work. So so if uh, if I never call puts here, okay, wait, yeah, if I if I call puts after Wong instead of before. Yeah, then uh then you might need to then you have to not might. Yeah, then you have to call puts yourself here. Yeah, can, can, can just call puts. Hey, wait, uh, actually we're already calling puts. Right? Oh wait, uh oh yeah, you are calling puts and then 
Oh, so as your calling puts, the GOT would have already been populated. Okay. <laughs> Big brain. Oh, okay, la. then no problem. La. It's just me being stupid. Is everyone clear with the concept of leaking lips address? Anyone got any doubts? Yeah. That's so suddenly it's... a huge dump of new concepts. So the only new thing here is uh this leaking and finding assets. Uh, the rest of the uh yeah, the rest of the export should be similar to the previous ones. You know, run the exploit ones. The, the one with our solution. So I'll in the, I'll fill in the uh, information here. Why do we? If, if it's confusing, right? Just, just ignore what's happening at the second part first. Just think of uh the first part, leaking the libc, leaking the libc base. We split into two parts. We ignore the second part first. So think of our objective as getting the libc base. So uh, once we run the demo, you can see how what we get. Wait, is it from page or from segment? Hmm? Oh, from page. Or? Yeah, I think it's from page. Yeah, so uh, the th this part should be should be familiar. We can add it with the same heading. So what should we see? Remember, right? We are trying to get shell. Is everyone okay? Or who who is not clear? Right. Is the earlier part okay? So we can or oh, I can do a a short demo into how we a step by step approach. Yeah, you 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 demo. Uh, uh, let me share with you. Yeah. So I can first. Actually, we we can just think of it as wait, wait. Think of it as answering, asking a question. That is uh. We want to call system, but we cannot call it because our binary doesn't have system. So we run it over in GDB, we do stream system. We don't have system anymore as, as we see in our source code. We don't have system, but if we if we check, if we run the program. And we print system, we can see that there is a system in libc, like what we said just now. So we want to access this system that is in libc, and every time we run a we run the program, there will be libc. So now, uh, now that we know that we have system, we want to know the address of system, call it like what we did in exercise three, right? We have 
we have to find the address of system. Like what Cal, uh, Nigel asked just now, would there always be system? But as we demonstrated just now, it, uh, yeah, the uh, address of system is not always the same. For example, here, seven, maybe the same here because GDB for me always loads at the same place. It always looks at, uh, what is here, Q and and then kill the stuff. Yeah, <laughs> it's always hey, the same. Hey, thing, what is it saying for you? Uh, uh, I just, uh, yeah. If I run it outside of the media. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Let me just delete everything. I just run it. Oh man. Okay, I just run it. And then I create a system. Now it's in something like this. Let me write this somewhere. Then I, I start it again. And we have a new address. So this is the problem of ASLR. Like we don't check set. We check set doesn't tell us. Oh, but every, every operating system has ASLR nowadays, unless you go and disable it. So ASLR will change the base address of libc yeah, that's what we covered just now so the pro so the question is still we want to call system and what is the address of system so we need to figure that out and one information you can get from the program is if you can if you notice here the the last few is always the same so that's what we covered just now the offset is always the same like if you do this as we did just now the offset of system is some something like uh okay so this one yeah it's uh four f eh? sorry I, I got it yeah, yeah it's four f four four zero from the base so like what David let uh showed just now I won't repeat again so, but the question is we still need to have an address into libc to minus this offset by to find the base because now that we, now that we know the suppose now we already know the libc base oh, sorry. suppose we now we know the address of system is this then we can minus off the libc base uh, the, the offset to find the libc base then let's say we know the offset of puts which is this and then we take the libc base which we found out earlier and we add it with the codes offset we get this and this is uh, this is exactly puts so the same idea that uh we can okay let's say we found out the libc base which is this and then we know the offset of system, which we already know. We can we have found out how to find the offset as long as we know the libc version. Then we can find address of system. And once we know the address of system, we can do basically what we did in part three, right? Just now, we call system, and then we pop RDI red and put bin sh into RDI. Then we do our usual rock thing. That's the that one we did before already. So now the question is how do we get system? Uh? So just now we have shown that GOT, we have the GOT entries. And we can if we found if we manage to leak out the GOT entry, we can minus off the offset. And find puts. And this one is the libc base. If you see it ends with three zeros, we can be confident that it's the base. Right here, you see, it's the same. So we found out the base, then we can proceed to find system. So let me show the exploit that we wrote. OK, 
Okay, let me run this exploit and we just pause after we found the find the loop series. Forgetting. Uh okay, I need, I need Python 3, oh no. Uh, yeah. Uh, using uh, okay. Uh, uh, I I changed the way I did. I just I just a string. I don't need to be fast. I just use base standard. Okay. Okay, sorry. Uh, the delay. Okay. Yeah, well, we should get it soon. Uh, I think it should be underscore instead of at. The puts at you see. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, two more, two more. Very fast. Yeah, now I can run. I hope it works. Okay, okay. Now we managed to leak out. So let's see first. We managed to put leak out puts at libc. What is this? This one is I attach. Let's see. Puts at libc. I what I wanted to do was here. We just this one was very similar to what we did just now. Just now we did system DNSH and pop RDI red. So I think we are uh, somewhat familiar with this. But instead of doing system DNSH, I do puts puts dot. So uh okay, but no issue. So file bug report, but uh if I check the contents of the GOT at here, if I GX, I get this, which is exactly this. So this is the GOT entry of puts, and this, that if I do p puts, it is the address of puts inside loop C. So here we see that we got a reference into loop C. With this information, I can find the loop C base, which is the same as this. Then moving on. Knowing the offset of lips of system, knowing the offset of system, I can find the address of system in libc, which is this. Similarly, so knowing the offset of bnsh, I can find its actual address inside libc. So, is is this clear now? Anyone got any questions or doubts or need more uh, time? Uh, I have a question. For yeah. the address of system inside libc, it's always the same distance away from the base, is it? Or is it also affected by ASLR? So, uh, so only the base is affected by ASLR. <clears throat> the distance is affected by the libc version. Oh, okay. I see. Understand. But it's not a big deal because we can just find use the you can just find out what version they are using and, and then find the offset okay uh, thanks okay yeah, so hope this this part is clear because once this part is clear you can see that it's the same thing as earlier already once once we get this part settled once we leak out the stuff we need from the lip C we just do the same thing as we did before. Nothing new here. Okay. The libc version you also find through GDB, is it? Uh, so in actual exploitation, we realize that we cannot uh you realize that we cannot get GDB, right? Yeah. Okay, so no big deal. We can get two addresses from libc. Then 
Here we have one. Here we have, uh, let's see another one, uh, get. Yes. Yeah, then let me open up the libc database. Over here. Uh, I put it here. Okay, here we have puts, IO puts. And I just need the last three, 9C0. Okay, IO gets. Zero, zero B zero, fine. And uh, it sees that I'm using. Where, where did it go? Uh, you see, I'm using libc two point two seven, and you guys should find out. I can even download it. Uh, I don't know how to download. Oh, so you think you can download? I see. Oh, it can, can, yeah, download. Uh, oh, wait, what? You can, yeah, you can download. I tried it last time. Oh, you can. Yeah, just find out the offsets here. Oh, okay, I see. So, if you don't know the libc version, the step is to dig out two, and in the libc database to find out which version. Then, then the steps are the same afterwards. Good. Hope hope this is clear. Yeah. Okay, nice, nice. So you cannot uniquely identify the version with just one uh, function address, is it? Let me try. Uh. I, I doubt. But yeah, I don't think you can. Oh, oh about, okay, I think you can at least say that two no one uses 2.3 anymore because we are already at 2.31, 2.31. Oh, okay. 30 versions back. That's, you can do it. And this one is i386 means 32 bit. So we can make that kind of link oh okay. and even if there's two possibilities is it just uh we just brute force try both then yeah 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 okay i see okay i think it's five five already shall we yeah. continue uh so we have another part we have part five but i don't think we have time to cover it because but we have I wrote some stuff you can go and read up. It's about the same concept, but this time I uh, just just show it a bit. Uh, there's no point showing this one. Uh, there's one difference. If you run check set, there's pi enabled, and just now you didn't mention, but just now. Do you notice that our program always starts at 400k? 4, 4, 0, 0. It always starts with this. But it's not no, always the case. When pi is enabled, okay, you see here? This one pi is not enabled. So it's always 400, 4, 0, 0. But when pi is enabled, let me show you. Oh. Why I I write in Python three but my computer doesn't have Python three. Oh. Okay, very fast, very fast. Yeah. Um. So, okay. Yeah, that ball. So here is our base. You see, our base is not at four hundred k anymore. It's at some some something this but it still ends with zero it always ends with zero but it's at this then let me do once again it's at something different so it's like this 6 bac then just now was 9a54 so with n asl and Pi enabled. Pi stands for position independent executable. So as you can see, the position is indeed independent. It changes all the time. So it introduces another round of headache. But once again, we can dig references to some something, and then based on the offset, we can find the base. So the concept is similar. But I guess we don't have much time. 
do it anymore. So uh we skip uh it's five already. Maybe we yeah, maybe we can uh leave it as a challenge for you and you can ask in the ah, yeah. spot if you have problems. Yeah, 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 you just you just try it yourself. It's the same concept. So it'll be good to try it yourself. Yeah. Okay, okay, then we'll also we'll also share the solutions uh, after uh, maybe uh, sometime after. Yeah. Okay, you guys try first. Okay, so I'll move on to the last part. Uh here you just take a few minutes and do a conceptual discussion here. Let's discuss the concept. So here, what is the problem here? Here, we change the gets. We change from gets to f gets. So we change it to such that we can only write 56 bytes. And that's not the same as what we can do just now, which is unlimited. So that's uh, say a question that Nigel asked at the start. Can we, is it limited? So if the developer does it correctly, it will be in some way limited. It won't because actually uh this is a bit extra, but if I write a program, if I write a program that calls gets and I do this, it will contain uh, it will say gets is dangerous, should not be used. So here's the issue. So let's say we use F gets and we limit to 56. We have an issue here. We cannot do our rock changes now because let's go back to this one is the same question as question two. Let's see our exploit for question two. How many do we need? We need 40 A's. Then we have eight bytes here, eight bytes here, eight bytes here. Oh, then we have more than we have more than 56 already. So how how can we go about this? Does anyone have any ideas? There's kind of some hints based on how we write this program. So we can think about it. Uh, uh, I'll go for a walk. <laughs> One minute. Uh, David, take over. So uh do I do I, do I go, go through the part or I let them find myself? I can just talk through like a high level concept. Uh. Okay, so just now uh yeah, just now we, we showed that you yeah, have limited space, right? Wait, screen. Okay, so yeah, limited input. So here you can see here, uh, I, I did dialog. Uh, so you can think about it. Uh, does your rock chain always have to be on the stack? Can it be somewhere else? And if so, how do you uh how how do you make sure your rock chain in that other place gets executed? So you can think about it. Uh, maybe you can put your rock chain in here. Yeah, and then somehow uh, use this limited input uh, input to get uh, to get the execution directed here. Yeah, so that's maybe a homework for you to try because we're running over time already. Yeah, I'm that's back. Uh, then you have anything? Uh, I just came back. Sorry. Uh, so any, anyone want to share their idea for this? Or you already went through? Oh, I already uh, gave them the uh, like the high level uh, idea. You can have your rock chain in another place other than the stack. 
Uh, David, is it possible to put the rock chain inside the char buffer and then we execute the char, bu the char buffer? Oh, you mean put it inside this array? Uh? Yes. Then instead of overriding the return address with something else, right? We just put the point, we just put a pointer into the base of the char buffer to start the execution. Oh, so you mean uh you you return to this array? Yes, correct. And then we execute the rock gadgets that we added there. Oh, wait, uh, yeah, that's uh, not. Yeah, that's I guess that's possible. You change, you mean you change you okay. you set your return address to be the buff? Yes, correct. Oh well then uh I think we, we missed out the cons concepts at the start. There's these two concepts that block you from doing this. Uh two mitigations. Uh, uh wait, uh, I was gonna say something. I forgot to read back. Yeah, but uh there are two mitigations. There's this thing, there's ASLR, so you won't know the address of the stack. The stack address will always change every time you run it. And the second thing is there's this thing called the annex bit. If you uh then we can run check sec. Yeah, there's this thing called the annex bit. So if annex is enabled, your stack cannot be executed. Oh, okay. I see. That's, actually, that's why we do rock because stack cannot be executed. And I think that's why you were, your concept is half, uh, half correct because if you want to execute, it will be shell code, not a uh, rock chain. Because if you put your rock chain into bar, it is a set of addresses. It's not a set of instructions. Yeah, I have to think about that. You set up gadgets, not instructions. And if you jump there, you just say port. Oh, okay. I, I think about it. This now be it for this to the chart. Okay, uh, anyone has more questions? Or if the, in the future you have uh, more uh, questions that you found out, also ask in the Discord. Yeah, can, maybe we can give a summary of what we covered. Yes. Oh, summary, uh, summary time. Yeah, yeah. Can okay, some, some, someone share what you learned today? <laughs> or learn nothing. Okay, I think we can end the recording here. Maybe go into free freestyle chatting. <laughs>